Yo, what's going on my people? Welcome back to the Live Capital YouTube channel where life is for the taking. It's the host himself, Ted Talk Money, coming back at you to tell you that Fed now is coming. It's going to change the way that we bank forever. My people, I hope you've been enjoying the past 24 hours because you know what you get over here. Another 24 hours of blessings. Go ahead and open your heart and receive that airdrop. Now, my people, today we're going to be talking about Fed now now for years swift has been the way that we transfer money between banks and that all is really about to change be modified fed now is more so a new system that's going to allow us to transfer money instantly 24 7 365 between banks and without having to wait days for it to go through there is a full scale trial that's going on right now and i believe it is going to completely change the way that we bank forever but my people before we step into this update if you haven't done so already please smash that like button now guys i have a lot of news lined up for you we're going to be talking about the eu we're definitely going to be talking about swift and yes the fed now update now my people as you can see here right now we're in a little bit of a decline we have our crypto market right here on sub trillion so right now we haven't met the trillion dollar mark you have a lot of big cats higher financial institutions and whatnot that really want to see this crypto market reach five trillion by 2025 we shall see those developments now let's go ahead and move forward looking at our bitcoin right now we have our bitcoin right now is at 19.9 ethereum's at 1.3 see right here past 24 hours helium has done some winning right here guys of course if you guys don't know the helium community just recently uh completed their proposal to move over to solana of course solana just shut shut down recently i believe it's because of that integration you have your trust wallet tokens which are up i mean this is just one thing i just think is quite fascinating you have a lot more of your uh, retail investors that are coming over and they're looking for you know wallets to take all of their crypto off of so trust wallet is a pretty good one you can connect completely with web3 through trust wallet it is owned by binance cz does own trust wallet uh, but to let you guys know a little bit about it it's in the billion a billion token supply max supply for that so just letting you guys know and of course doge is now pumping of course based off of the elon musk twitter news all right so let's go ahead and check out our prices. If you are new to our channel, what we focus on is utility cryptos and ISO compliant cryptocurrencies. XRP right here at 48 cents, up 10% still on the week. Let's move forward here. Of course, guys, we're, we're probably blowing past your top 100 blue chip crypto, but understand and realize we focus on the chosen five over here. You have your Stellar right here at 11 cents. Algorand's right here at 34 cents. Moving forward, Quant right here, 135, still up. Now, you guys can see this is kind of a bit of a dip. It's down 5% uh, on the day for 24 hours on the day. So we'll see if this thing dips even further. Most people are really looking at how can you get more gains out of your ISO cryptos. People are really playing the scarcity game here. There's only 14 million Quant that's out there. So if you can grab yourself some, not financial advice, you're going to get some gains. Hedera's right here at 5 seven moving forward we have our iotas right here at 27 cents down nine nine percent on the week i have um some actual shimmer news for our premium people we're going to be looking a little bit more into it what's going on with iota and as well our guy who we have a flavor for right here xdc he's in the 90s still but right here at three cents holding strong up two percent on the week let's go ahead and look into our updates here today my people right up like i showed you iota b is claiming to be the pretty much letting you guys know they're the first swap in the iota and shimmer ecosystem good morning iota community shimmer rocks and what other shimmer layer one tokens do you want to swap on iota b just let us know please retweet and comment so like we said guys iota b they're going to allow you to swap for example if you have your iota you could swap it for any other coin that's being minted over on shimmer you could do all of that the premier decks almost for iota so iota b really interesting 
Now, speaking on utility, it's looking like here, Cointelegraph is saying that mainstream NFT adoption will be driven mostly by their utility. Now, if you've only come in, you know, to knowing NFTs just based off of proof or excuse me, PFP projects, picture for proof projects, those had huge growth in 2021. Picture for proof, you can kind of think of Crypto Kitties, uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, you know, any of those NFT collections. It's just pictures for proof of how many coins you're into. If, for example, you have um, Super JoJo's over in the XDC, uh, I'll give their their project a, file or a shout out. You know, the utility must be there. But really, what they're saying here is that the utility uh, will come about as essential components because it'll add value and functionality to the technology. One of the most well-known use cases for NFTs is the ownership of digital art pieces like CryptoPunks or play to earn gaming is another use case which was massively popular last year. So just letting you guys know that you have market leaders like of course Board Ape with actual utility granting apes uh owner access to events and copyright licenses on their actual nfts long story short letting you guys know that the people want utility users want utility letting you guys know that i'll leave you guys a link if you're interested in more of that Next up right here, big shout out Michael Crypto uh, for putting this news out there. I thought this was quite fascinating. So you guys know BRICS nations, of course, include India. So if you are new to our channel, we do focus on the BRICS nations and their rising influence and really what that has to do with digital assets. So recently, they, um, India just had their largest hackathon and PLI was actually involved plugin plugin was involved so India's largest blockchain led hackathon PLI blockathon wrapped up with great hype as you guys could see here this is like a local Indian paper but they're putting it out there the first largest India blockchain led hackathon powered by xdc.dev concluded on a triumphant note unifying vibrant communities the 36 hour blockchain hackathon uh, began in september 2020 long story short showing showing you guys uh plug-in built on xdc they basically had a lot of people out there out of all the entrants 35 use cases from over 100 registrants were shortlisted as contenders long story short just so you guys can understand what we're talking about here plug in right here there long story short they are a uh, decentralized oracle a oracle service so you would pretty much have all that off chain data it would be health records or sports data whatever it might be off chain data and they can aggregate it onto the chain so you know of course chain link is the most popular example of this but you have one already powering the zenfin network so guys looking into it for yourself this is a pretty heavy coin to let you guys know i mean we have an all time high this this thing used to be not not all time high but let me show you guys see this thing came out the gate swinging at 62 cents see what i'm saying a little higher than that around 67 cents so yeah you know if you guys want to get involved of course you can grab yourself some on bit true bit true and of course liquid next up right here we have um, another michael crypto uh tweet putting it out here about x swap uh x swap is finally in the news guys so this is for my xdc holders of course uh the x swap treasury token aims to impress by providing many use cases let's look a little bit further into it so x swap is the name that has been gaining considerable attention lately and for a good reason the x swap treasury token or xtt may be best defined as x swap protocols farming reward token now if you are new to our channel what x swap is really about is your premier uh dex for xdc for example if you might think of uniswap pancake swap and all of that you have x swap for xdc so they recently had an airdrop for their treasury token just to let you guys know a little bit more about it the xdc launch pad the the treasury token like we told you is that farming uh the farming token right but it has it has a lot to do with the launch pad so the launch pad actually provides a comprehensive solution to projects seeking a wide range of services such as project token generation pre-sale funding token and liquidity locking long story short guys i think this is going to bring a lot more liquidity of course towards x swap but really into the xdc ecosystem we have to really see this as like you know the DeFi opportunity for what it is um so i'll, I'll leave you guys a link so you can learn a little bit more about that 
Next up, though, for my XDC holders, letting y'all know that uh, it's looking like XDC is going to be representing at CBOS at CBOS um, this year. CBOS is actually Swift's fintech conference, so they're going to be having a few names out there. Of course, um, I'll show you who else is going to be attending, but XDC is being there. You he, you have now the new COO at Zenfin saying, great place to be as all the banks come together at CBOS to see the advancements in payments and other innovations. So, you guys have right here Troy Woods, Impel. They put it out there that Andre Casterman will be uh, attending CBOS to showcase our ISO 2022 API that is built on XDC with optional uh, optional instant settlement capabilities via digital assets. Long story short, guys, there you go. It's coming together. So really good stuff. Really good stuff. Now, right here. OK, right here. You guys have been paying attention. This is another step closer in crypto regulation. The EU has now stepped forward in passing the MICA. The EU has now approved the MICA. Let's look into this, guys. Now, to give you a little bit of a background, we've been covering how the EU has been developing a framework for cryptocurrency uh, regulation. Over here on this side, we do focus on the real world activities, real world events that have something to do with utility cryptos and really fra the regulation framework. Now, it has been said amongst a lot of of prominent names okay that your regulations are going to wipe out 95 to 99 percent of these cryptos so members of the european council approve the text for the mica or the markets in crypto asset regulation framework early wednesday this of course you know of course today is a major step towards establishing rules for how digital asset exchanges and other service providers should operate in the eu member states personal opinion coming out from over here this framework is going to be held out all across the world it's pretty much a framework that's going to allow for other people to kind of copy off of it and live off it uh but really quickly the mica proposes regulations for crypto asset service providers including measures like identity checks minimum requirements on stable coin reserves mandatory identity checks that have been commonplace among crypto businesses hoping to curb money laundering but stable coin restrictions have more recently become a point of focus for regulators in the fallout from terra's implosion so obviously guys that was another thing as well Doquan, that implosion that happened with that, 3AC, everything that just the all of the dominoes that fell after that implosion. Some people really feel like that black swan was Doquan. OK, so seriously, interesting stuff. Next, I want to show you guys is this. Of course, we've been suggesting this exchange for you guys. If you've been looking for a legitimate exchange to really get involved in, we definitely recommend Fair Desk Trading Fair Trading Wiser. The reason why we say this is because this was created by some executives from Binance as well, the Morgan Stanley Group. But here's the most important thing that we want you guys to see is this, is that you can really have a backing here. OK, they want to provide some real bonuses for you guys. So really quickly, so you guys could see it, why we're always about fair desks is because they truly are about security, performance, reliability and support. I want you guys to see this really quickly, that we are involved, that we are a part. OK, and we've been making our deposits and the bonuses have been accruing um, right there. So you can make sure that you see we are a part of this whole thing just to give you guys a little bit of a background really with fair desk. Again, like we said, they're they're backed by people who are uh, the executives from Binance and as well the Morgan Stanley Group. But these two things are, are the most important things, regardless of everything that I said, Binance, Morgan Stanley. These two things are the most important. This U.S. license and this Can Canadian license. You can see here the U.S. license money service business regulatory authority, FinCEN, U.S. Department of Treasury. So this is legit. They're all the way in. They have their license completely there and registered. OK. Okay, but you also have one in Canada as well. The reason why these licenses are so important is because this actually allows them to be able to trade XRP. OK, I want you guys to see that so you can actually see that that license allows them. They have approval from FinCEN and as well the Treasury that they're able to um trade xrp so what what's going on right now is that they're offering our audience right now a bonus here you guys could see it once you guys um 
get involved, use our link and everything, they will back you your deposits fully all the way up to 600 bucks. So of course you complete your KYC, you can get a $2 bonus right there. But then once you deposit, they'll back you all the way up to 600 bucks. So you can see it right there, make your deposit equal to or ab above $100 and they'll back you up to 600 uh, USDT. Of course, you'll get trading bonuses as well. Those trading bonuses can be used to offset trading fees, um, a whole bunch of different things. You guys can see it uh, right there. You can use those bonuses, guys. So really good stuff. Consider using our link. Next up, right here, guys, Swift. Okay, so we're getting to our main piece here, my people. So I want to be understood. You know, some people were saying, you know, Swift is dead. Swift is nothing. You know, um, you know, Swift is out of here and everything. Let us keep it in mind that, for example, XRP, RippleNet, they're going to work in complement with Swift. ISO and Swift are going to have a coexistence period from November to 2025. So between that coexistence period, you're going to be having having sending and receiving, right? Um, completely different, um, those messages. So by November, all banks need to be able to receive that ISO message. Right now we have the legacy system. You have Swift that is being utilized for MT messages as I speak right now for cross-border payments. But when we go into this new age, you have Fed now, when you have all of these new instant payments, high value payments actually processing for um, faster, cheaper, transparent payments, then we're going to be getting rid of those Swift MT messages. And that's what we're going to be getting to all banks speaking ISO. So let's look right here about how they're saying Swift is paving the way for global use of CBDCs and tokenized assets. We've been saying it for quite a while, guys, that Swift is really just biding time. That's the thing. This is technology from the 70s. They can try to strap some Nikes on this old grandpa, but it's still going to succumb to DLT. Now, DLT can assist it, if you will, but long story short, ISO messages will rule. ISO 20022. So to give you guys a little bit of a background, what they're really talking about here, interlinking central bank digital currencies for cross-border payments, it's really about them bridging and utilizing DLT networks, existing payment uh, systems, allowing digital currencies and assets to flow alongside and interact with traditional counterparties. So dig that. Okay. It's not as if Swift is just going to, to replace Ripple. It's not as if Swift is going to do, you know, have a Swift coin and something and it's going to be okay. What they've been utilizing is DLT. All right. Uh, so I'll give you guys a little bit of a background on that. Swift in collaboration with Cap Gemini achieved CBDC to CBDC transactions between different DLT networks based on popular quorum and Corda technology. So you can you got right here, Corda technology. We've shown you guys how well we've shown the premium members how all ISO cryptos at least the chosen five can have a place in Corda tech. OK, R3 Corda, um, the Corda settler shows an example of using XRP. XDC has been deemed the native uh, settlement mechanism for core dApps. So I want you guys to see that connection. 14 central banks, including Bank of France, C or SMBC, chartered or standard charter, US, U. BS and Wells Fargo are now collaborating in a test environment. Just so you guys could get a little bit more of a background. So you guys could see here. This came out this month. OK, about the results reporting about connecting digital islands. CBDC's results of those swift experiments interlinking central bank digital currencies networks with existing payment systems really quickly so you guys can understand what we're talking about here dig this so these three models right here you guys can see including let's just look at the first one you would have central bank a and central bank uh, digital currency b transfers between these central bank digital currencies offers a multitude of com competing private companies benefiting from compatibility and measures right here you would have those private uh private offered correspondence and clearing services right here you'd have a clearing system between them both a clearing system with technical interfaces joint contractual underpinning of that interlinking system kind of like ripple net kind of like your inner ledger protocol family and then right here you have model three which will have a single multi-currency system which would be a single system with multiple um central bank digital currencies i'll leave you guys a link for all of this of course but really they were talking about uh for example on model three project dumbbar 
and other projects have explored issues such as access, jurisdiction, uh, jurisdictional boundaries and governance. I'm really touching on this briefly. I'll leave you guys a link so you can dig a little deeper into it. But just so you guys can know, we've covered all of those um, those projects right here is one BIS Project Dunbar International Settlements using multiple central bank digital currencies. Guys, again, if you are new to our channel, CBDCs are going to be around. They're coming. And I think I'm going to give you guys a little bit more of a personal about all of it. You know, I don't want you guys to really feel like central bank digital currencies are going to be the devil, that they're just going to be here. Slave coins, slave coins, you know, nothing like that. But we've been really showing you guys that you want to take pride in the fact that you have the actual railways that you actually know what's coming before it's coming you guys realize a majority of people don't even look at crypto have no crypto at all don't know what's going on with finance you congratulations to you okay and now uh this one right here this is coming out from gilbert uh this is the actual quant creator himself so uh Gilbert himself, he was letting you guys know that they're going to be at CBOS. Like I told you guys earlier, CBOS is Swift's uh, conference to really see what's going on in the future of finance, in the future of payment processing. And of course, Quant is going to be there. So limited edition Quant cards and stickers for CBOS getting ready for an exciting week of meetings, talks and networking to help shape the future of finance. Really good stuff. Now, guys, before I get into my next one, this main piece, if you guys don't mind, please smash the like button if you just got in here. Please smash the like button it really helps get the message out there and help our channel. Now, right here, guys, I want you guys to know we've been covering Fed now for quite a while. I'm so excited to really present this to you guys. Fed now is going to be representing a 24-7, 365 payment system for the U.S. They previously announced that the Fed now service um, was going to be coming out in 2023, but now they're they're pretty much putting that out there. They're putting a, a narrow, a, a time limit on it. And they're saying that the full scale uh, pilot testing has begun. So I want to read this out with you guys so you can be up to date with what's going on with the Federal Reserve and now what's happening. The Federal Reserve Bank recently narrowed the timing of the Fed Now service launch to mid year 2023, targeting a production rollout of the service in the May to July time frame. OK, they've targeted the production rollout in May to July. This further defines the previously communicated 2023 launch window for the anticipated instant payment services and comes as the Fed now pilot program begins technical testing for the service. Letting you guys know that technical testing with the Fed now launch date in sight, we are pleased with the collaboration and dedication our pilot participants. I'm going to talk with you guys about them have brought to advance modern payments in America. This is coming out from the CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. Currently, more than 120, 120 organizations are participating in the pilot program. Recent newcomers, including U.S. Bank, Exchange Bank, and several payment processors, including Form 3 and Modus Box. Yeah, as long story short, at launch, the Fed now service will be accessible to financial institutions of any size, helping broaden the reach of instant payments to communities worldwide. Long story short, like I said, guys, instead of having to wait the traditional way of waiting 24 hours or something for a payment to clear. Now we're talking about near instant finality, 24, 7, 365 within the states. And that's if it will be accessible to financial institutions, banks, of course, everybody worldwide. The benefits of instant payments are increasingly important to, cons uh, to consumers and businesses and the ability to provide this service will be critical for financial institutions to remain competitive. So next year, the financial institutions will be able to use Fed now service. OK, so I want to talk with you guys about actual involvement here with Ripple. So Ripple's partner, Volante, OK, we're the Fed now is going to be using Valpay. OK, they're going to utilize Valpay so to give you guys some details. They are one of those pilot participants. U.S. Fed now instant payments end to end instant payment processing through Fed now our clouds or yours. So they're letting people know Fed now will be here soon. The Federal Reserve's new service will enable individuals and businesses to send and receive account to account instant payments 24 7 365 and will be available to all depository institutions by 2023. Okay. 
So real quick, so you guys can see the involvement here. Of course, this is advanced instant payment technology, secure and private ISO 2700, ISO 2022 fluent. Uh, of course, let me see if there is a mention here. Of, well, this actually has extent. They say extendable to ACH wire, uh, RTP, Swift and RippleNet. They see other payment systems here. RippleNet is, of course, the one that is right there. So, of course, they're going to be utilizing it. Of course, got to show you guys, this ain't nothing if it ain't. Cypherium also is a service provider. You might have been wondering, well, what is Cypherium? You guys are talking about it. Aren't they proof of work? How could Cypherium be chosen by the Federal Reserve if they're proof of work? All of that. What I'm going to be actually, what this really does is answer the question of how Cypherium is going to be involved. And really, we cover with you why the Federal Reserve chose Cypherium. But right here to read it, Cypherium plans to offer instant payment services to organizations that are adopting the Fed now service. Right. You have the Federal Reserve Bank senior vice president and Fed now business executive appreciating the commitment to Cypherium to enable Fed now adoption. Long story short, looking into it for yourselves, guys, Cypherium utilizes a hybrid consensus mechanism called hot stuff. People see proof of work and just think, oh, well, this isn't going to last long. It's just going to get banned out. But the thing is, Cypherium patented this unique consensus mechanism, and it actually consists of the same tech that Facebook chose to use for their DM, their, their stable coin uh, that they were trying to push a few years back. OK, so long story short, if you guys want to get involved, uh, Fed now showcase provider right here, Cypherium chosen. All right. Fed now is going to be coming, changing the way we bank forever, and they're going to be here by 2023. So if you guys haven't done so already, there is a link in our description for Mexi. Mexi is the only one that's really taking on a majority of the volume because this one right here is a hidden gem. OK, a hidden gem. But guys, I appreciate you guys making it to this part of the video. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like button. Hit the subscribe as well. Hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of these updates. But I'll holler at you later. Peace. <laughs>